morning, everyone. My name is Dennis Baldwin. As Ron mentioned, uh, one of the founders of Drone Blocks. We're in a small town called Dripping Springs, just outside of Austin, and we're super excited to be uh, working with Bell for the second year. We uh, have strong roots in STEM and really have focused on uh, making drone programming easy, right, with block coding. So uh, when we got connected with Bell, we heard about uh, the platform and the vision for this year's competition, we were super excited to be asked uh, to put together this manual. So uh, without that out of the way, I'm currently sharing my screen. And if you would go ahead and follow along, uh, we have put together a documentation manual in Gitbook, and the URL is bellflight.gitbook.io. Now, you don't have to access it in your browser right now. I encourage you to, to bookmark it for future use. We'll be work, walking through it today. And there's a lot of content in here and I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed uh, as we go throughout this uh, session. We're gonna be doing some call outs uh, on the bench and showing various components, but the Gitbook is always going to be um, updated. It'll be a living document and really here to to walk you through the entire process. So with that being said, let, let's talk briefly about the phase one overview. So the task and what I'll be covering with you this morning is the primary goal. So you've hopefully unboxed or opened up your container provided to you by REC. You've gotten the boxes out and, out, and um, we're gonna talk through basically what boxes uh, correspond with what components how those components fit together to ultimately build uh, the drone for phase one primary goal. Secondary goal, uh, Casey will be talking about this, uh, building the PCC to be able to uh, actuate servos and control LEDs. Casey will also be covering the overachiever goal and that's using the VMC uh, to be able to uh, get it, get more familiar with it, learn about it, which it becomes instrumental in phase two. And for me personally, phase two is really exciting to be talking about uh, using a companion computer or the VMC to communicate with the drone and, and perform autonomous flight. And then finally, Jim Crane from REC will be talking about uh, the 3D printing project. So as I mentioned earlier, there's going to be a lot of information to consume, but we hopefully put it together in bite-sized chunks with uh, photos and video, everything that you could possibly need. But anytime that you have a question, please refer to the glossary. Uh, we have a Microsoft Teams link that I'll just introduce you to very quickly. You can go in here, there's a section called Ask an Engineer, and this will give you a direct access to the Bell Engineering team. So you can go in here, post a question, and uh, look for a response. The other thing, that is super exciting about this year's um, VRC is the fact that a lot of what we're doing is built on open source hardware and software. So for phase one, we have a GitHub repo that will be uh, open source accessible uh, for you to download the code, access various files and, and collaborate with the, uh, the Bell engineering team. And then finally, uh, we have a senior design submission link when that time comes, Jim Crane will talk a little bit about that, but you guys know to always refer back to this link to, uh, to, to give you the information that you need to get in contact with Bell. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go to my bench view. And can I confirm that you guys are seeing the bench? Yes. Okay, thank you. So if you've opened up your, your tub provided by REC, we'll have box one, this has the frame included in it. Box two, this is our transmitter and receiver. So this is what we'll be using to actually control the drone. Box three contains a lot of the uh, flight controller components, the actual flight controller itself, the 3D printed case, and the necessary cables to connect peripherals. Box number four is actually not a box, it's a soft case, but this will contain um, ESCs, our speed controllers that will ultimately attach to our motors. So the other thing that I'd like to mention 
is that if you're not familiar with the world of drones, uh, the, a lot of the components in this kit are uh, best in class. For example, these KDE motors um, are some of the best that you can get out there. So uh, just keep in mind that a lot of what we're doing here will enable us to uh, build on the foundation for future uh, competitions to come. Okay, so I showed the boxes as part of uh, phase one. If you take an exploded view, these are a lot of the components uh, that are in this kit. Now, I do encourage you guys to sort of refrain from trying to get everything out all at once. Uh, I encourage you to come back to this video. This, this session will be recorded. The Git book is always here. If there are any questions, of course, we'll, we'll address those. But we just want to make sure that uh, you don't get too distracted by going through all of this content. So in the frame box, we have the necessary uh, parts to basically build the, the default VRC drone frame. We have top plates, motor arms, landing gear, a lot of the uh, screws and, and nuts that you need to assemble that part of the frame. For box three, we have the flight controller. That includes, it's a PixHawk based flight controller provided by NXP Semiconductor. Uh, the beautiful thing about this is you can load, and, and we cover this uh, in the Git book and we'll touch upon it a little bit today. We can load custom firmware onto this uh, flight controller. You could, for example, in our case, we're going to be flying a, a quad rotor, but uh, PX4 supports hexacopters with six rotors or octocopters that even supports fixed wing flight. And part of box three is the power module. So this power module will allow us to connect the battery, uh, power the, F the flight controller as well as the rest of the motors. The power distribution board is essential to be able to connect the ESCs, connect the battery and get power distributed through the entire system. And then once again, back to the motors, you should have four motors in your kit. Those will be mounting to the arms and ultimately attaching to the VRC frame. The speed controllers, those will be in box number four, the, the soft case. Those are what will provide signal to the motors to control different throttle inputs. So if you think about the way a drone works, we wanna keep it level, uh, stable in the air. The flight controller will send those signals. The ESCs then in turn send the necessary uh, power to the motors to uh, have them spin appropriately. And then we have our propellers. Now, the great thing about uh, the propellers that we're providing is they're well balanced. They're threaded, so they can thread directly onto uh, the motor. And that will allow us, as we'll cover uh, shortly, to understand that only certain propellers can go in certain posi positions and uh, the threading is what enables that. We have the transmitter that came in box number two. The transmitter is what we'll be piloting with, and the receiver is what is actually attached to the VRC drone and receiving signals uh, from the transmitter. And then finally, in box number eight, uh, Venom Power has been so generous to donate uh, batteries and chargers to VRC. And these are this is, in my opinion, one of the leading brands as it relates to power systems for uh, electric flight. So in an upcoming section, we'll be covering the ins and outs of uh, charging, storage, and, and just overall battery safety. So I think at this point, I'd like to leave it for a, a brief Q&A, make sure that everyone has these parts or understands us what's in the kit, and then we'll go further into the assembly. Thanks, Dennis. George, you have a question? Yeah, um, are we going to be, uh, I'm assuming we don't need prop balancers? That's or? correct. Okay, so you don't that, think... That's uh, a good question. These are actually really, they come balanced from the factory and they're really, as you um, probably are aware, are, are tough to balance because you can't put them on a traditional balancer. Yeah, okay. Just out of curious, yeah. Yep. Edith, you have a question? 
I missed the code to open the box. <laughs> it's four one zero. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, right, Dennis. Oh, go ahead, George. Um, in terms of like battery usage, uh, is there requirements uh, for the competition of batteries in terms of like using third parties or? Yeah, I can answer that, Dennis. So yes, we are requiring that you only use the batteries that are provided with the kit. Um, you'll have two of them, so you've got a backup and the charger to go with that. Um, and if you guys end up needing more for any reason, just reach out to us and we can work that out. Perfect, thank you. Oh, uh, one more question on the hardware. Um, what's the estimated flight time uh, with the battery that come with the kit? I knew that was going to. I knew that was going to happen. Okay, so we were doing some test flights over the weekend, uh, really just putting together the um, the before you fly your your flight test. Now, don't quote me on this. I, we're we're going to put more up to date information in the Git book and and do maybe some battery. Uh, discharge charts, but uh, I, I guesstimate with the, with the setup that you're seeing on the screen cur currently from anywhere from eight to 10 minutes. Now with phase two, ultimately the pay, there would be payloads and more, so you're going to see less flight time. And, and, and the competition, I would say, is designed around, we're not gonna put you in a situation where you know something's gonna take longer than the time that uh, you can stay in the air. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking more like in terms of like practice and testing. Uh, I feel like there's probably might be the need for additional batteries. Uh, right. Uh, if you only get like eight minutes of you know or twelve minutes of flight time, it would take you, you know, to say like one C. That's like an hour of charging, right? It's like you test charge for an hour and you only get like twelve minutes of testing. Yeah, that that's that's really good feedback. I think DJI has us all spoiled, right? <laughs> 30, 30 minute flight time, right? Yeah. So I would I would add that if you know if a team really is planning on some aggressive flight testing with you know trying to do long periods of time, you you can order additional batteries so long as it's the same battery, the Venom batteries, but you could order those through Venom. All right, we have a question from Jose. Uh, are the batteries considered lipos or nymphs? Lipos. All right. 4S. All right. And I, I don't want to jump ahead too far, um, but if there are battery questions, we have this great uh, documentation that has all the details provided to us by, by the Venom team. So we, we'll cover that, but you also have access to it in the.